you had the pleasure of working with what he's now, uh, he's now passed, his son's passed away, but the great Henry McCullough. Yes. Uh, you were a great friend and... Great friend and I uh, played with him for I don't know many years, 20, or sorry, 30 or 35 years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And Henry had a great career. Oh yeah. Within, within his own right and... We, we mentioned it in, in one of the other episodes when we were talking to Ted Nesbitt about uh, Henry's name came up and about the, the Paul McCartney. Mm. You would know lots about that as well. I, I don't know much about that. I just knew that the show would actually loan them or give them to uh, Pedal Steels after Paul had recorded this album in Nashville, I think, Buddy uh, Lloyd Green played on it. Okay. Something Highway, something I think it was called. and. Then stores to promote the, the steel and show, but they were quite willing to give him a few pedal oh, steels. That's amazing. But Henry, uh, as we're saying, I mean, he uh, he, he was not he wasn't even sure where they went type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he was given lots of stuff over the years. Uh, actually, when I was playing with him, Vox gave him an amplifier. It was one of the, the Vox AC thirties that wasn't very well made. It didn't last him very long. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Uh, no, Henry was a great man and such a talented man and improviser and a songwriter, but maybe he didn't have the overall success he should have had, yeah. you know. But yeah. anyway. yeah. And his caliber of musicianship was, mm. he played to a very high standard, didn't he? I mean, the amount of stuff he played with, I mean, he, he, uh, well, he started off in Ireland playing with uh, Ennis Gill and Gene and the Jensen bands like that, and then went yeah. on to England to play with Paul McCartney when he left the Beatles. And, Played with Wings. Oh. Yeah, Wings, yeah. And then he played, he played Woodstock, didn't he? Woodstock with Joe Cocker. He did. He's supposed to be the only Irish man to play at Woodstock. Yeah. There you go. And played, even, I think he played in the, the recording of Jesus, the Jesus Christ Superstar soundtrack. Wow. And I think he was offered, uh, you know, a one-off one -off payment or a point on it, you know. But the boys thought nobody would ever buy a CD or an album back then with. But Jesus Christ, what he was slightly wrong about that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> they were very wrong. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anything, is there anything, Percy, you know, I'm sure you've mountains of stories and, and uh, you know, is there anything that stands out? Great uh, memories? Uh, well, I mean, just with Henry, there were some nights, magic nights that, uh, and uh, maybe, I remember playing, I was playing the British Bar in Ernelton last night, and there are nights we played there where it's a pretty small venue, but there'll be people sitting in front and then in their hunkers right up to the back. Wow. And the atmosphere, uh, and I mean, it was only there again, it suited me really well because I'm playing the pedal steel. He would do some, he wrote a great song called, if you ever, you should go about it, it's called Can't Sleep for Thinking of Hank Williams. Wow. So pity Hank Williams Jr. or something he didn't record it, you know. Yeah. Great song. It's almost like a wee history lesson about Hank Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Was Henry a Hank Williams fan? Oh, he was. He really? was into every sort of music. He yeah. was into Hank Williams, into Irish traditional music. He was into rock music. Because wow. in the band we would do, he done that song, which is really, I was almost trying to play that Hank Williams uh, sound on yeah. it. And uh, then he would do a song that would tear your head off. So then I was, Playing really heavy stuff in the steel. Sure. I mean, I was just uh, this boss tone. I don't think it's working. And it was a terrible situation. Yeah, you know. he couldn't play or anything after no. that, Percy. No, no, he couldn't play. Uh, 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 but we had some great times and a great band we had because uh, we had James Delaney, a great keyboard player from Dublin, uh, yeah. in Dublin, yeah. and Sean McCarn and sax sure. and different drummers. The last drummer we had was a boy called Peter McKinney from Belfast, who's uh, just an angel in the drums because people know I'm not a big fan of drummers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, he, he was just great. Him. And then Liam Bradley would play with us too. So he's great, yeah. Liam's a yeah, great man, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very good. Very uh, good. Uh, well, that's it. And, you know, 
um, a wonderful career. Um, you've 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 worked and shared the stage with the best. Well, some of the people I mean, I remember, and as you said, in TV things with Nancy Gervis, and then fair play, Philip Donnelly got me involved in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Because he he came back from Nashville and uh, he must uh, he, he trusted me to to play the right sure. stuff. I, I I met Philip uh, about I think probably just under ten years ago um, when he was back living in Clonmel uh, here in Ireland and uh, I had always heard so much about Philip Donnelly and I watched those sessions mm. and uh, I ended up doing a show with him in Clonmel. What a great guy! Yeah. He was such a funny and the stories that Philip oh, Donnelly had was, was just, just something really really special, you know. Yeah, he was a great guitar player and a great. Uh, Organizer, you know, because he was the MD in all them shows, and a great dis distinctive guitar style. I mean, I'm not saying he was like Mark Knopfler, but he had, you just hear him and you know it's Phil Donnelly. Well, again, not unlike, and I'm making comparisons, and I really shouldn't, but it's like when you hear Percy Robinson playing Steve, you know it's Percy Robinson. Yeah. But when you heard Phil Donnelly play guitar, you knew it was Phil Donnelly. Yeah, yeah. Because that Lone Star state of mind, oh, yeah, that's and, right. and that. He had a vibrato that, in it. That, that Nancy Griffiths that, uh, and that all Nancy Griffiths sound right, good, was, right. was Philip Donnelly yeah. and uh, uh, just having a convert a few, uh, on a few occasions in the later years when yeah. I met Philip, he was just such a, such a great guy and such uh, and that's something I love because I always say this and Jonathan you're probably the same, you often probably think, I always think we, we were born too late. Ah, we were. You know, and I said this to Ted Nesbitt earlier, and I'm saying it to you as well, uh, Percy. You, you, you know, you've seen a great era of music, you know, with great musicians. Yeah. You've seen it when it was all real. Whereas nowadays, and I'm not saying it's not as real, but those greats were around, you know. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. And, you know. It's, it's a different a different era now. Every stream now as well. You, you barely get something handed to you now with a new album. It's, it's, it's you have to listen to it on your phone or, yes, you know, yeah. and I know yeah. even that process of recording is completely changed. Yeah. And I don't know if it's a better word for it or not. Yeah. But. Do, do you ever look back, Percy, uh, at even those sessions that the television, the Philip Dunn, do you ever look back and think to yourself, <laughs> That was nice to do that, you know. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, a lot of the situations you were in, when you look back, uh, it was nice to do like that album that I done with uh, this boy Towns Van Zant. Yeah. Oh. I don't know if you know of Towns. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last album he recorded was down in Limerick, and it was Philip Donnelly produced it and wow. played on it. Yeah. And he asked me to do it, and we went to Limerick, and uh, we we done it up. There again, it was recorded the way I do in Nashville. Uh, in the morning we got together uh, and uh, we had two rough demos, the, two of the songs and then Towns Van Zandt came at lunchtime and we recorded them live wow. in the afternoon yeah. and then when he left uh, I'd done over du dubs and two other tracks wow. and that was the last album he recorded Seven. before he died, you know he died, that, that, it was I think in October or something, I, mean, I can't remember the year but then uh, after Christmas he had some operation and he, he died and he, I mean a lot of people would know that uh, Towns Van Zandt he's sort of a cult sort of a figure yeah, and he, yeah. his songs were pretty dark but uh, but many wrote the famous uh, what did Poncho and Lefty he wrote that That's song he wrote that yeah. song yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, no I, I remember afterwards we done the session went into a wee back room and uh, Donovan you know the singing yeah, song he was living down south and he came up and if you don't, you know, if you'd record it, because the two boys were singing their songs and encouraging each one to sing whatever their favourite would be, and sure. we were playing along with them. Uh, you know, lovely moment. You just do it. At the time, you don't think of it. You're just there, and you and you, you do it. You know. Yeah. I know. But looking yeah. back, it's something else now. It's such a, uh, it's like another sparkling career to look back on there now. Well, I know, yeah, but you don't really. I don't look back too much. You're thinking, what are you doing now? And not much happened now. Oh, so we Could I could I come in here with a little story about Percy? Um, some years ago, <laughs> I was in St. Louis, and as a I decided to go for a bite to eat. <laughs> and, and, and sitting around the table was Marty Stewart and, and some of his family. Yeah. And I didn't want to go and butt in, you know, but I waited until they were sort of settled. And, and I went up to Marty Stewart and I said, Marty, I believe you're a good friend of a friend of mine. And he said, who would that be? 
I said, Percy Robinson. Well, he jumped to his feet and he said, really? My favorite steel player of all time. Wow. So there you go. Very good. Very very good. good. That's very amazing. Good. That's great. Very good. That's very good. some, that's yeah. some yeah. privilege. I met Marty when I was doing the session series in Dublin and uh, we would have breakfast every day together. We, we were sort of hung out, hung out together. Yeah. I mean, at that time, wow. he, he wasn't doing that much. I mean, he was a child prodigy, just a genius oh, really? playing the Madden play. Flatten Scruggs or, oh, and all that. It, yeah. And then uh, at that time, he sort of between things. And then he went on to have his own TV show yeah. and everything and yeah. had hits. And, but uh, and so he was playing on that and uh, it was good. Yeah. The, the other boy that I met too when I was doing the Steel Guitar Festival uh, was Ross Hicks, remember? He was over oh, one year. Yeah, Ross Hicks, yeah. And Ross, after I came off the stage doing my thing, he said, I thought you were just really one of these other boys. Uh, but uh, you know, like as people would say, like a human parrot duplicate and everything else, you know, and everything. Yeah. But he says, hey, I can't. What did he call me? He says you're a stylist or something. To this world of fact, but made me feel good that I was doing something slightly unique that he thought was uh, was good. You know. Yeah. Oh, nice. brilliant! Yeah, yeah. Very much so. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, because, uh, yeah. So Ross, uh, he was he was a nice man. Brilliant. Percy, you played. Um, down to, obviously you played the, the Steel Guitar Festivals and you've you done Jerry Hogan's Festival in Newbury as well and you've done, you've probably done nearly all the Irish ones, have you? No, well I missed out a few. Missed already. a few, yeah. I only done one, played it one in, in uh, Newbury. And you had a, there was, there was a, did your guitar go missing? That was the one, the last one that ever happened there yeah. because it was a really big one and uh, the, a big, Airplane hangar, massive building, and there were so many steel players that year. But anyway, I was going from Belfast to Bristol, and when I arrived in Bristol, waiting for the pedal steel to come, oh. no pedal steel. Wow. Jeez. And uh, <laughs> I was hanging around waiting, and, and decided <coughs> this great friend of mine who's passed away now, Frankie Robinson, he was with me. And we had rented a car to drive over to Newbury, and then I decided. You know, will we bother going because I don't have any steel in because I use a different tune and uh, some of the knee leaves are different. Of course. So anyway, I went there and uh, fair play, uh, whoever was over, I, I can't even remember, I think it was, a, uh, it was a Carter maybe I got at the time. But anyway, yeah. they uh, let me use the pedal steel. So in a few minutes I detuned it and uh, some, they weren't exactly the same, but nearly the same. Uh, uh, movement and knee labors and I played the pedal steel festival there Brilliant. and that was a big one too because there was such a big crowd there right. you know? right. and then the only other one was that I didn't play at it and this was in England and New Bread it was a smaller thing in the in a school wasn't it yeah, yeah. and that is the year that Tom Brumley was there wow and I got talking to him I mean, he was just great and because uh, that was really in because he played with Buck Owens but then he played with uh, Ricky Nelson, sure, yeah. and he, that big hit that had uh, Garden Party, yeah, yeah, uh, and because uh, uh, I was really, I'm, I've always been into that more uh, f uh, just contemporary sort of country, you know, yeah. maybe, and uh, no, it was lovely to meet him, yeah, yeah. very good. Percy, would you do us the honours and maybe play something? Well, I don't know what could have played, <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever it takes uh, her. It's a bit weird to think, I mean, I was telling you before. That thing catch and still play we bit it. Oh yeah. yeah. Influences and, 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 and I'm going to ask you maybe maybe in the early days who yeah. was your influences and I because because I, I kind of have an idea of your current you have some yeah. current day favourites definitely yeah. but um, but starting off in the early days who 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 inspired you who who would you have listened to well I mean a lot of the stuff I mean, I wasn't even that sure who played on it more likely but I mean definitely Lloyd Green and, and Buddy Emmons yeah. 
Uh, I've got a good album to Bud Emmons and uh, the stuff that Lloyd Green played with Charlie Pride and all these different sessions he done was just lovely. Uh, and and then down through the years, sometimes I would, because I'm not that well uh, know who played and everything, so, but I would listen to something and if I really liked it, then you would pick up on it and gain something from yeah, it, you know. Yeah. But, and then now definitely Mike Johnson. I know you're Mike Johnson. And John boy. Huey. Oh, he would tear your heart out, that yeah. boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, that stuff that Mike Johnson plays, because it's all live in a, in a small venue, and no bluffing, everything played live in the tone and, uh, and the perfection of it, the way. Uh, but uh, the complete band, everything in that band That's is just right. perfect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Country yeah. family reunion and yeah. Larry's, uh, Larry's uh, diner. That is just. To me, uh, it's just the best ever. When you put Mike Johnson and Rhonda Vincent together, that's some combination. Oh, <laughs> it's really great. Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, it just uh, it makes me. Uh, it just there's something so good listening to them uh, and all them old artists. That's just a great program, country, country family, family reunion. It's fantastic. Yeah. And to give them older artists a chance to be seen and people hear how good they were. Because now they can't get a, a Nashville more likely they couldn't get a recording deal. They they they're, they don't do much at all, and there's so many great talented people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. What a band. I know. The the country you know and Mike Johnson's MD. Yeah. The band. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, There's something special. The, the, they're the real deal. The real deal. And then I remember Vince Skill was on. I would almost be the same because he got on, uh, and uh, he actually started to cry because yeah. he, he was saying how. I appreciated them people so much and the music they, they brought and they were so humbled to yeah. be in front of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Vince being a musician, he knows exactly, exactly. The, the, yeah. the, you know, the cost of, of, yeah. of uh, you know, of, of the work and the effort and, and the, and the caliber of those guys. Yeah. It's, you know, no, no, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. it's really lovely. Uh, you, 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 you have, we've often sat and talked about this sort of thing, you've, you've shown me some of those little Mike Johnson things. Yeah. You, you, you do like... Well, I do, and I sit down and try to work some of the things out. Not that you would copy them, but it just brought, it gives you something else to work on, you know. Exactly, yeah. 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 Oh, it's just a bronze yeah. horizon. <laughs> and, the, and the thing is, a lot of the stuff I've been playing on, and stuff I've recorded like this, there's a man from, uh, he lives in Memphis now, he calls himself the Reverend Neil Down. Uh, and he is a great man. He, yeah. He's not really a real uh, preacher, but he was asked. He was over here recorded two albums. He with did. Me. I know that. I'm worried. And uh, yeah. he uh, was. He was in Jerry Anderson show, and uh, Jerry said to him, "Are you a real preacher?" He says, "No, but I'm a very spiritual person." Yeah. And he is such a great character. And a lot of the stuff I was doing with him, you were playing things in steel that it's not really steel licks as such, you know. Yeah. And you're doing single note things that. That work, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and I would be more into that than to uh, worry too much about you know the chords and things. I do. I've I've often sat and listened to your playing, and and uh, it's caught my ear where you, where you do. But you see, a single note with emotion and feel, yeah, uh, sometimes can be better than a million notes. Well, that's, I mean, you know, it's lovely to play that fast stuff that I can't do. Yeah, but you yeah. wonder where all them notes are coming from. Yeah. Sometimes, but they're just, <laughs> exactly. Oh, they're, they, they, they can do it yeah. great. Yeah. Something I touched on lately, Percy. We, we just spoke about it late, very lately, actually, and it was something that came to my attention when I was uh, scrolling through Facebook. When when uh, the great Johnny Cox, I happened to just spot where Johnny Cox had three picks on along with his thumb pick and uh, I sent Johnny a message and he very kindly came back to me and he says he's played that way for over 20 years with three picks mm. and uh, I suppose uh, I've just always known it to be a thumb pick and two picks yeah. but I did ask you the fact that you don't use picks uh, well, you do introduce yeah. your, your uh, third finger yeah, I'm using it, yeah for, for playing chords and chords things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and, and and you can get bigger chords obviously, and you can add. You yeah, know. I mean, I wouldn't. It's just for playing chords. You wouldn't be able to do it much for picking single notes no. or anything, no. but for chords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's not uncommon for you to use three fingers at no, all. I don't think so. No, you you don't even think about it like as most yeah. players do. You know, you yeah. try to, if somebody asks you if, if you're giving a lesson or something. Uh, to try to slow it up and show exactly what you're doing sometimes yeah. isn't the easiest thing, yeah. but uh, no, no. It's very, very hard to slow something down that you used to playing for years and you never thought about it, especially if you're self-taught as well, you know, it's, getting, yeah. uh, it's very hard to, to show someone. 
you know it's uh, I mean this is the problem it's such a hard instrument to play <coughs> and so many people uh, it's more than Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland but they have pedal steels at home they buy them and I mean uh, it's it, it's the, the, the they want to do it but it's so frustrating for them yeah. especially if they haven't played slide guitar or or electric guitar so much beforehand yeah. and to make it sound the way it should yeah I, I mean, it looks so easy. That's right. You know? That's right. It's I mean, right. A, like any like a fiddle or anything like that, yeah. where you have to get the pitch right, the vibrato right, pick the right string. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've often spoken about that, Percy. Whereas yeah. vibrato is, uh, and you've got a, <laughs> you've got a, a wonderful way of describing it. You, because I've heard you say, you know, you want to be careful and not have this sort of. Like a whirlwind effect. I don't know why the blizzard blowing. <laughs> the blizzard <laughs> blowing. <laughs> no. And, uh, yeah. And it's such a feel thing. Uh, if you even start to think about it, you do it automatically. Yeah. You turn You've it got a great. It's it's technique. No. And you really have a great well, technique of vibrato. Well, it's like trying to be like a human voice in a way, you know. Yeah. Because maybe you would hit the note and then you would gradually bring the vibrato one like a human voice would yeah. type yeah. of thing, and then because when you don't have the vibe right vibrato it's really awkward the tuning because if you had a dead note and it's slightly out of tune this dead note even sounds <laughs> better yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, can shiver, you can shiver it into tune can't you really yeah. <laughs> you can really cover it yeah. into tune no it's uh, it's, it's very frustrating for people to, to play the thing you know yeah. and the best thing I would say to people to play something really simple and enjoy playing that it, you know, not to try to get too complicated until you can enjoy doing that, and surely you have to stretch yourself <coughs> yeah. a wee bit, but you, you can only do so much. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it, you're, you know, and, and, and that's for sure. As if, it's, it's, it's certainly, I think, fair to say from when you started pedal steel, um, there was nothing to, there was no help. No, no, there was no internet, there was no help. No. There was that book, yeah. there was a book that Stanley McCook gave me, and that, that was it. And then you just Was that the Woody Winston book? It could have been, uh, yeah. I think it was the Winnie Winston book. Yeah. Then there was a Mel Bay book uh, they had two at that time. But then it was just your ear and listening to music and trying to work it out how they do it, you yeah. know. Yeah, of course. And that is good in one way, because some people now, they can do get everything in the internet yeah. and you don't really train your ear to pick things out or able to play things or improvise very well. Yeah. They can learn that specific thing pretty good but then throw an hour track at them and they wouldn't know where to start, yes. you know. Right. So you really have to do the homework behind the thing. Of course. Yeah. yeah. There's no there's no easy way. There's no easy way on panel steel, no. <laughs> no. Or any instrument or for that right. matter, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I think I think I suppose the reality is obviously as a as a young guy, you you have with the standard of player you are, you obviously put a lot of hours of practice and what in your early days. I must have remember you know, I'd be uh, working uh, in the garage and then I'd come home at six o'clock whatever get something to eat and my mother I'd go into the room and my mother would shout it's twelve o'clock come on you better go to bed you have to so go in the morning so, yeah so you could be playing all evening you would be practicing you know because uh, you were so dedicated yeah. and uh, uh, enthusiasm to, uh, and to do that's it. the thing about a person you don't get to the level that you play at without being dedicated you know, and, and, and it's not just down to the notes that you play, but it's down to what we just talked about. Yeah. It's down to the vibrato and the approach mm -hmm. and the dedication and the tuning and the emotion because it's, yeah, you can do all this fast picking stuff mm -hmm. and there's some great players out. Yeah. But for me, pedal steel, and I think that's why I'm such a Mike Johnson fan as well, is yeah. because it's the slow thing and it's the emotion because you can, you can just sit there and close your eyes and you can really get into, yeah. the, into that. And for, for me, pedal steel, I think that's that's a huge part of it for me. Yeah, well, I think, and it's, you need a, uh, uh, a bit of wisdom because, as you were saying, I think probably for me is because I was working in the studio. When you're thinking of the overall picture of the tr the song or the track, yeah, and you're not just thinking I'm playing this to impress the the steel player. You're playing to complement the song, yeah, and yeah. whatever you know you feel is natural to yeah. complement the yeah. song, and that's what people appreciate. I think you know, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, some people uh, get are a wee bit too keen to impress, you know. Well, that, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. And it's, yeah. it's that old saying, isn't it? Sometimes less is more. Well, this is it. Uh, and that comes right down to, to everything. Down yeah. to, nearly down to your sound and, and yeah. effects and, and, and yeah. everything. Really and truly. Yeah. 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 Very good. So, anything else, Percy, you would uh, like to... 
I you can't really uh, uh, the, the one man I would thank, and he's over in the corner here, but I was chatting about before, uh, uh, is Ted, because if it wasn't for Ted, a lot of the people wouldn't help fiddle steals. That's and, exactly right. And I've my Bennett and my Emmons from, yeah. and uh, this uh, this is my baby, and uh, all of this girl. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, it's really good, because if it wasn't, where would you go for a pedal steel in Ireland? Exactly. Yeah. No, no, no shops would already stop no. them for all that they would sell. Yeah. You know? And you know, um, I have to, and I, I would like to say this sitting here now again, Ted has been a wonderful friend for, for a number of years and I've bought guitars and he's done some work. But you've also been a, a steel guitar mechanic. Mm. And, and uh, particularly these push pulls, because anybody that, that owns a push pull will appreciate how complex these are and there's not too many people and I don't even think Ted maybe would be that interested in, in ripping a push pull apart. I send them to Percy Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Percy you're a great guy with these push pulls because you can you can <coughs> uh, that's your, your your mechanical the engineer side to your yeah, to your, friend, yeah. yeah and and you know you're not afraid to, to, to rip these babies apart and if they need it done uh, and an all pull for that matter, because you've well, an all pull is so simple. Yeah. In a way, compared to compared to push there's pull. so much uh, things to get right yeah. to, to make it work right. Yeah. But then when it's working good, it's to me it, it stays in tune much better. Yeah. Because all the, the movements are here. Uh, there are no stops. Uh, the stops are all here. Yeah, Whereas like with the all pull, the stops are over here. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that there's that length of thing to expand or contract. And, uh, yeah, 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 good, yeah, yeah. Good point. And, uh, and again, I think nearly most of the guitars in my collection, I think you've, you've, uh, you've serviced <laughs> them all, you've, yeah. you've certainly through your hands. Isn't it funny now that the push pull are coming back into vogue a bit? You know, it's, it's amazing, um, because I suppose 10 years ago, Percy, you, people could have looked at you and considered you to be slightly behind the times. I know. Or, yeah. Whereas nowadays, it's sort of end thing now. It's the know? end thing, and, and, and you have people now approaching you wondering will you sell sell your guitar to them. Boys like <laughs> Ryan Turner. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I, I'm sure like Mike Johnson must get some credit for that. I'm sure there are steel players too, yeah. but everybody uh, uh, would see him, and then they would realise he's playing a, a, a push pull. And it must have been a bit of input into why it had become more popular. Yeah, think, he you know. might have yeah, yeah. some influence yeah. on bringing it back again. Yeah. Of course, they're, they're, brought out, they're remaking the brand again. Yeah, they're, they're making, remaking them. Yeah. It's great to see. You know. Yeah, Kelsey O'Neill and, and Darren are doing a fantastic job with their new resounds. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward at, to seeing one and um, to, mm -hmm. to, to, to maybe to perhaps play one because I think our good friend George Seymour has one and George will be getting the guitar. So well, perhaps. When George gets his guitar, we might, we might persuade him to bring it to Ireland when he's here on one of his golfing uh, yeah. trips. <laughs> well, it was golfing trips. Yeah, yeah and, uh, and we, uh, it'd, be, it'd be lovely to, to, to see uh, one of the new Emmons resounds because, mm. um, like yourself, Percy, I'm a, I'm an, I like the Emmons guitars. Yeah. And, um, but there must be lots of old lemons, uh, push balls lying about uh, that are now coming out, out of the woodwork because people are more interested in them. You would imagine. Because for so. a lot of people, they wouldn't even have a, they wouldn't want a push pull. I know they're heavier and they're awkward to set up. Yeah. So, majority of people now, 90 or whatever yeah. percent of people are using all pull. Yeah. All pull, I would imagine. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think the thing in some of the old guitars was they were, they were maybe not quite restricted, but they didn't have as, I suppose, in 19, for, for argument's sake, in 1975, if you were buying a, a D10 like this, it probably came standard as, a, as an 8x4. Yeah. And, and you know, your, your, your four, levers or whatever done the standard things but as, as guitars progressed particularly in the all pulls um, there's a lot of movements in these new modern guitars and, and so mm. many things but uh, with the resound being made all those parts are now available for push pulls mm. you can you can contact Emmons and uh, you can you can add or take you know you can you can put yeah. as much on there as you want it really Percy is that yeah. fair to say well, you could but then I think with all pull you can you can have more uh, levers and more more stuff happening possibly and stay better uh, better in tune maybe you know but i mean i mean you have all these levers and things but the majority of people if you watch them they're they're not using most of them a lot of the time no no but, yes. but it's nice to have them yeah too. it's nice yeah it's nice to have it there but i always do sometimes and i think 
I never need any more than what's here. And this is a very basic mm -hmm. setup guitar. And and when you when you look at what Lloyd Green achieved exactly. from such a from such a, a, a standard setup uh, and a basic Lloyd was it's it's you know it's all down to the player. It's not down to the guitar. It's, it's no, I mean Lloyd yeah. is just a genius. Well, it's just complete genius. Yeah, you know? yeah. The tone he gets. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was chatting to Phil Donnelly because he'd done sessions with him, and he was saying you almost think there's some sort of harmonizer. Uh, attached when he's playing because he gets these uh, inversions of chords that are that there's a depth to it that you think there's something else happening there but it's just the the way he plays and the tone he gets and the inversions of chords he uses. Wonderful. You know? yeah. Great. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Something special. Well you know Percy uh, probably brings us close to a, a, a close. Um, I would like to thank you for coming up. Well it's a pleasure. Pleasure. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you and your knowledge and uh, you know and your help throughout the, the, the past few years of, of our pedal steel journey. Um, you know, you've been you have been a great man. You've been uh, you got me my first push pull. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I want it back something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know it's great to have you. You're only an hour up the road and you're well, another, you're an only goal man like myself and uh, uh, it's, it's just a, always a pleasure to have you over. Well, it's been a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for organizing. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me to be sitting in and saying very little, but I'm enjoying every second of this. That's good. That's good. Great, great stuff. Would you like to leave us with something, perhaps? No, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm just... <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.